hello there welcome back to the channel in this video we are going to see the abp react version 2 there are some major changes in version 2 to go over the major changes you just have to come here the major changes that uh, from the ui perspective i removed daisy ui uh, in favor of chat cn ui uh, if you want to know more about chat cn ui go to ui .com. the main decision came to the way on how the components are architected uh, in Shatsian UI, where you have more control over how your component looks like. So the idea of this is that there is no packages. There is a bunch of code where you can copy and paste into your project and then start using those components. I thought it's a better use case for a template than just putting everything in some package. Mm -hmm. And the next thing is that I removed Turbo Repo this project on the version two, it has only one project, which is an XJS project. Everything is self-contained in that project. There is no uh, monorepo, there is no packages to deal with. Everything is simplified. And uh, I have added all the basic components from Shatsion UI and also changed the authentication from Next.js auth, sorry, not Next.js auth, Next auth, uh, to cookie-based authentication, which I implemented myself. And um, now the tenant management works a little bit better. This in includes a small change in the API side. So in the API side, you need to implement the host feature, which I have um, provided in this ABP single layer template. This is basically my use case. So I implemented this way because almost all the projects I start has custom domains. And um, these custom domain run the Next.js app, but the backend is controlled by .NET. So I needed a way where I can give a host name and then get the tenant ID for that corresponding host name. Um, if you are building a SaaS application, which is technically, I think most of the ABP users are, uh, you need an extra modification here. I will also show you how to remove this if you don't want to implement all these things. Okay. So these are the major um, changes. Um, all the other things are kind of similar because it's a basic AVP application with not so much uh, change from the last one. Uh, it works the same. All the features are same. It's just that uh, right now it uses a different uh, UI framework and uh, there's no Turbo Repo, so it's easy to manage. So let's um, go and start our um, template so uh the current version is 1.3.7 1.0.37 just make sure to install this version so that uh, you get the new one otherwise you will get the old one um and uh, the second thing is that um, you can go and check the all the source code here uh in the um, github repo um that is nothing crazy going on uh, if you are familiar with next.js you would be familiar with this uh, folder structure Okay, now let's create a sample project. I'll just copy the, I have already installed uh, the template, so I'm not gonna install. If you don't have it, just make sure you install and then um, I'm creating a new project. Uh, okay, I created the project and then uh, we have, and I have opened that in the VS code. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So the first thing uh, you should know in this is that XJS has a middleware. And in that middleware is where I'm setting the tenant. Let's get rid of this red squigglies here by installing the package. So I'm using the pnpm uh, to manage the package. Use pnpm i to install all the packages so that um, VS Code can find all these uh, modules. So first is the middleware. Every time a request comes in, if it is not this request, the middleware is ran. So in that I'm checking the session and then I'm checking if the session is has a tenant it's because almost all of my applications should have a corresponding tenant in ABP. That means we should always have a tenant associated with each and every uh, domain of the SaaS application. That is the architecture I went with. So um, I'm setting the tenant. Um, if the tenant is not available, and that is available at auth set tenant uh, endpoint. So if you go and if you want to go and then see how it is done, so you could have auth and set tenant route. 
it just sets the tenant by getting the tenant with the host. So how is that API implemented? That's what I said uh, it here. So this uh, ABP React UI is not a direct droplet replacement. It has one dependency on this tenant endpoint, but if you feel like I don't want this, just go and remove this code, uh, which is available in the middleware, and then you are done. There is no dependency, then it's just a dropped in middleware. Sorry, it's just a drop in replacement for your application as well. Okay, now that out of the way, just uh, check all the other options. Uh, here is the config file where I have a bunch of configs, which are like menus and uh, client configs. If you want to know how the authentication is handled uh, in the current uh, version, I have made a blog post about it here, OpenAD Connect with Next.js. Uh, in this, I'm talking about how the cookie authentication works. Just go and check out this blog post uh, to understand uh, OpenAD Connect uh, uh, implementation in uh, ABP React because it's the same thing. Uh, I did it here. Here I'm explaining how the login and logout works. So the next important thing is that uh, you have this uh, package.json script called gen API, where you have this uh, your API name.com, which is the uh, API domain I use. I mean, I use avp.itasubash.com. Here, uh, you have to replace it with your own API endpoint. Uh, so make sure you change this url to your swagger and then generate your own client because right now the client which is generated is based on what i host in this abp.antispash.com and the next thing is that you have to change the uh, environment variable i have this env.sample file what you have to do is just go and make sure you rename that file to dot uh, env so that the environments are properly set up here um i will just change that to abp.antosubash.com so this is the uh, api endpoint i'm using and in this api I, old, I have already created the abp react next app and then the scope uh, is abp template because this is my abp template and named it uh, that way so you have to make sure that you have your API or the app server um, running in the same thing like me. So I have my API and the app server running in the same application. In your case, if you're running a tired application, this will be two different URLs. Then you have to decide um, with two different URLs. So you have to create another URL and switch whenever you're using um, identity URL or API URL. You have to modify all this by yourself. For the simple use case, I'm just using one application, which contains both. Um, and then I have a scope called ABP template. I think from your use case, you have to go and change. You should go and change the scope here according to your scope. And again, this Redis um, environment variables, just go and update the Redis. And this is the session encryption key. This is a very long um, 32 character text i guess so just add some crazy long uh text uh so that uh, your session is saved uh, i'm just adding some text here and if you have a google analytics id I come and add it here and it's the same with the umami umami is a self-hosted analytics i use it sometimes for uh, gdpr compliant analytics connection because some of my project has these gdpr compliance they are not comfortable sending data to google in those cases, I usually host the Umami and then um, provide an analytics tool uh, with them. So that is also implemented here. And uh, you have use session for session, session options for um, all the other things. This is the cookie name, uh, which we are going to use. So if you want to change uh, the cookie name of the session, just come here and change according to your needs. Um, yeah, so these are the basic um things and if you want to go and check out the pages this is the auth page uh sorry these are auth routes uh think of routes as api endpoints uh in the next.js application and then there are uh, pages this is the by default page and then there is the admin pages where you have uh all the user pages tenant pages uh and then the settings page and then the profile page so all these are implemented uh in a similar way to the page directory but 
implemented for app directory now yeah so these are the major changes and um, this will make things a little bit more easier going forward uh, with Next.js because uh, Next.js is pushing mostly with server rendering right now, uh, but you can see that a lot of pages are server rendered, but not all the components are server rendered. So both rendering modes are supported. You can come and then check out the uh, UI and then you can find use client, which are server and uh, client rendered uh, components, both server rendered and then client rendered uh, components are supported you have use session which is used to get the session um, in the client side and then you have um, the get session um, method which is um, used to um, get the session uh, where it is yeah so there is a get session method which is used to get the server from the server so you can use the session in both places, in the server and also in the client, um, according to your needs. There are some client components you might want to do. There are some server components you want to do. Um, just choose the session according to your needs. This worked really well for me. And then all the components are here. And most of the time, some of the, the server rendered components are um, containing client components. All these are managed by Next.js. You don't have to worry about all these things. You just have to. Uh, change the mental model a little bit on how you're going to render the components, whether it's going to be a server rendered component or a client rendered component. Um, right now, almost all the um, components, unless otherwise required, are rendered in the um, server, uh, but there is also a provider which you have to know about. This is the uh, query client provider because I use um, React Query to make the queries so and this is available in the uh, main layout so if you have to come here at the main layout you can see that i have a react query provider which is technically a client component which makes sure all the requests goes through from client and all the client queries are routed through this proxy so anytime you request something from your client that is still handled through the Next.js. So there is no way to contact your external API, which is your API, from your browser's uh, context. So because in the browser, there is no token. You cannot contact the API directly from the browser. That is the most important thing you should understand from the last video, because in the last version of the React, ABP React, the browser made a direct request to the server um, with the access token which is retrieved from the auth server right now that has changed there is no direct request happening to the apis anymore almost all the requests are processed through the next.js application so that is what this does so i have a route which captures all the API requests made to the uh, Next.js application and then routes it uh, through, routes it to the external API, which is our app API. Um, so this way we don't have to store the token uh, in the browser. There is no security leaks anywhere. All the API requests are proxied through your um, Next.js application. Yeah, so um, I think I covered most of the basic uh, API endpoint, but if your API endpoint structure changes, you might have to come and look at it here. I covered um, the get, post, put, and then the delete request and made it as generic as possible and adding the authorize um, um, bearer token here. I am also adding the tenant here. So the ABP application should be able to figure out which request comes from which tenant without any problems. Um, as of now, I'm yet to find any problems with this approach, but if you think like there is any loopholes here, feel free to add uh, your comments. And it's the same with the login. Everything is controlled from uh, the Next.js application. There is nothing hidden and you have all the code, uh, so you can customize it as much as you need. Um, I know authentication is a sticky subject in the .NET world. Um, by adding Next.js, um, it can create a lot of complexities. That's why I went 
with this root of having as much as control as possible to control literally everything with no external dependencies and you can come here um, the dependency for the um, authentication here are open id client and then ion session with these two packages we are managing most of it all the other things are mostly ui related packages um yeah so that's pretty much it uh for this uh video i hope you like the new improvements and if you have any suggestions feel free to uh leave a comment or uh, add a uh, issue here in the abp react repo um i hope uh, you like the version too and um, if you want to have more updates on, regarding this, uh, make sure you subscribe and then um, give it a thumbs up to this video as well if you like the video. And I will see you soon in another video. Hope you have a nice day. Bye-bye.